Welcome to day 30 of our 30 day yoga adventure with Nicole Spirit. Here's Puppy Finn and there's Puka Dog and I'm so grateful to be here. I was trying to plan this class, get all my notes together, get all my crystals together, figure out what I wanted to talk about and I realized I don't need any of it. I've got you, we've got the mat, we've got a place to practice, so let's jump in and have a really nice day 30 together. If you're just doing this class as a one-off, dipping your toes in, I welcome you. I hope you have a really nice time. If you were part of our 30-day series, then I really have no words. If I had to choose one word, I would choose love. And if I had to choose a second word, I would choose grateful. So today I decided to wear my I Am shirt as a reminder that your presence, your consciousness takes on a vibration after you say I am. So you can say I am love, you can say I am doing yoga. What it does, it creates this activation in the higher frequencies and the higher chakras that maybe we learned about in this series, our 12 chakras rather than the seven that we're used to. So think about the statement, I am. Put it in a positive context. A few years ago, the I am statement in my world got changed slight, slightly um, to we are. Um, and that was through the brilliant work of Wayne Dyer. And once he crossed over and went home, um, the intentionality of the I am presence became something in my awareness that was more like we are. We are love, we are divine. So start with I am today and think about what the bigger picture of your yoga practice means. We're planting world seeds here to affect positive change for ourselves and the planet, for the environment, for the animals, for the children, for everybody. All lives matter. All energies are important. And this is when we all realize that every single one of us is just as brilliant and beautiful as everyone else. So use some of the skills you've le learned from this practice for your skill set, for your toolbox. And if at the very end of 30 days, you know how to take a deep breath a few times a day, maybe have a big glass of water, remember that you're a big aquatic water body. And to not necessarily think more positively, but vibrate more positively, then my work is done. So let's start a beautiful yoga class today and we'll go with the flow. We'll see how things unfold. I have a rough idea in my mind, rough, rough, <laughs> um, of how things are going to go. But basically we're going to make our way down to the floor. We're going to start our class in Shavasana. So Shavasana means corpse pose. And when you arrive here, the intention is you don't really do anything. So take a couple moments, wiggle your fingers and toes, drop your chin down towards your chest, close your eyes, and send this nice breath all the way down the body. That's an exhale breath. And when you're ready on your next inhale, animate your body from the feet through the legs, all the way up through the torso, all the way up through the neck and the head, and even the top of your inhale breath. You go out the top of your head, and maybe we tune into a couple of higher chakras. Then the exhale breath, long, smooth exhale breath. And for a couple of rounds, we'll try our Tibetan yogic breathing style where the exhale becomes the beginning of the breath. So wherever you are, your next exhale, think of that as the part one of the breath, exhaling gently and smoothly, nice, long, smooth breath. And then your inhale becomes part two. 
So find a gentle flow, use your imagination, and perhaps float your awareness into Anahata Heart Chakra while you've got this nice, long, smooth breath happening. And today we'll visualize our beautiful heart space as perhaps containing a flower. Perhaps there is even more than a flower, a garden. And take a couple of moments to find a beautiful, beautiful in bloom flower in your heart space, in your garden. Use your visualization, your sense of perception. And for the next couple of breaths, exhale breath being the beginning. Inhale is the second part. Sense or feel a flower in your heart that's in bloom. Notice if you can tell what color it might be. Give it a scent. Give it a personality. Is it a flower you know or maybe you've just seen and sensed some sort of beautiful presence of a flower that you've never even glimpsed at before. And while you're there, this long, smooth breath is happening and we settle, we imagine that in the muddiest place in the pools and ponds in our heart garden, that we have these most beautiful flowers growing. The mantra is Om Mane Padme Hum, that from the muddy waters, the lotus blooms. So while you're thinking about your beautiful flower in bloom, at the muddiest part, also think about perhaps, perhaps that you get a glimmer or a glimpse of a gem or crystal or some sort of diamond or beautiful mineral inside of this flower. Let's take two more breaths. You can visualize a rose with a diamond inside. You can visualize a lotus with a rose quartz inside. Maybe it's faceted and cut. And as you just catch a glimpse of this gem inside this flower in your heart, for just one moment, you connect with your own truest, most divine nature. What you really are who you really are. And then we gently smile and soften our face, let everything go, and then we're gonna float into our physical body. So set an intention for your class today. I love to make three wishes, and your intention you can come back to at the end of class. So maybe you make a wish for yourself, maybe for someone else, and then for the greater good, for the planet, for the environment, somewhere, some place to make it really in your visual the most beautiful possible place. For example, the ocean is teeming with all of its perfect aquatic life and all the bird life. You visualize it the way you wish it to be. The whales and the dolphins and all the fish one more breath while you set your intention for yourself, for someone else, and for this earth. And then we're just going to float right into our practice, our physical asana, our flowing postures. So let's just find our fingers and toes, give them a little wiggle and shake, draw your knees up to the chest, let's rock from side to side. Smile from time to time, check in with your breath, and then gently we'll float the feet down. Now we're going to come into bridge pose, set to asana. So hands are on the ground, we're going to lift the pelvis, lift the spine, and this is a nice thing to do dynamically for a couple of breaths. So your next exhale, roll back down. While you're getting into bridge pose, I'm going to just move the puppy as he is one of our special guests. Yes, little puppy. There you go. 
and last dynamic bridge roll. And then I want you to hold your hips up when we're done. So when you arrive at the top, pause for a moment, bring your shoulder blades together, hold up your hips and pause and gently sense and feel energy floating into the neck and into the throat. We're going to bathe our thyroid and parathyroid glands and this actually helps to activate our throat chakra. It helps to ignite our health, our beauty, our metabolism. One more breath. You can always release your hands. Maybe you clasp them underneath you. Just make sure you're not in any pain or strain. You're in a gentle, loving place. Good. Energy floating up into the neck and the brain. And then we're gently going to pause, inhale, separate shoulder blades. Nice exhale breath. Take your time and lower your spine all the way down to the floor. So find your space where you're on the ground and you feel really nice. And then we're going to draw the right knee in and up to the chest. Give yourself a little hug and then point through the toes on the right. Do your best. Take your hands behind the leg. If it's available, left leg floats to the floor. So pointing through the toes, relax your arms and engage your powerhouse, your core area. And then we're going to send the toes around five circles in each direction. So nothing else moves, just your leg. Opening up hip socket. Oh, what about the arm? <laughs> If you feel like it, include your right arm, come back to center, go five circles the other way. This is just nice to open up and sense the joints in the hip and shoulder area, the referral area. Last circle around. Try not to let the other parts of the body move. And then arrive back in center. Just pause for a moment, feel your strong, beautiful body and then gently lower mindfully with that arm and the leg. If your left knee is up, that's great, or wherever it is, let's draw it up into the knee, into the chest now, pardon me, and give yourself a little soft hug on the left now. Ekka Pada Pavanuttasana, one leg wind release. It's a bit of a mouthful. You can leave your right leg down, you can give yourself a squeeze and hug, and then lower your head to the floor, straighten through the toes on the left. Clasp your hands behind your right leg, uh, left leg. So now you can decide if you want to keep your right knee flat or if you want to bring that knee up for a little bit of extra support. Relax your hands, point through the toes. If you feel like it, draw your left arm up as well. Let's circle around. It's a bit more challenging when you add the arm. You don't have to. But just see if we can keep the rest of the body still. Notice right away you need to activate your core, your center, your dantian, your hara, your powerhouse. Come back to center, chin is tucked, and go the other way. Again, arm and leg or just leg. Kind of feels neat to coordinate the two and just see if we can move at the exact same pace. Let's do our two more circles around. Engage your core area, stay glued to the mat. And then when you're done, come back to center, gently, gracefully, mindfully release your left leg and left arm to the floor. Good, let's straighten that left leg long, flex through the feet, and we're going to do one core exercise today while we're lying on our back. So this is the one where we're going to Bring both legs up on an inhale breath. Really guide your arms by your torso here and glue your feet together. Chin is tucked to the chest. Big breath, inhale and exhale. You lower the legs towards the floor. So the inhale is up. Let's go for the gold today and we'll try for 10. Each time you bring the legs up, you activate that extra little bit of core strength. Good. And maybe you imagine your legs are stuck to a pulley and we increase the resistance each time. Last three. Don't quite let your legs touch the ground. Make the movement smaller, knees bent if you don't have a lot of energy today. And if it's available on our last one, we'll let the legs hover. We're going to lift up through head, neck, and shoulders. We're going to release the arms. If you need to, just put the legs on the floor. 
And we're going to do our dog's pant here. Send your tongue out of your mouth. Let yourself shake and vibrate. I'm feeling it too. Ten more seconds. Take a breath, lower your legs, lower your arms, lower your head, and be on the floor. Normalize your breath here. See if you get a tingle, if you get a little bit of a rush. Good. Keep your breath going. Keep it nice and smooth. Then we're going to bend the knees. We're going to bring the hips over to the left. We're going to stretch the arms out to shoulder height. Draw your knees up to the chest. Inhale over to the right. Good. You can use right hand to help you. You can hang out here in spinal twist as long as you like. And if you want to try some oblique or side sit-ups, let's do that now. We'll bring the hands behind the head. If available, don't even touch your head or you can make a little basket. Just try not to just use your arms to jerk your head up and down. We want to mindfully lift just straight up to the sky, engage those side muscles. You can even press your hand on your obliques just to see under the left ribs there which part of the body you're activating. Feel this whole line of energy from your hip coming up, raising you up and back, chin straight up to the sky. Last one, and if you want to, you can always do a little contraction where you just hold for a moment. You can even cup your hands around your neck just to make sure that you're not in any strain there. Good, and then release. A little bit of core exercise for the sides, and then I promise we're done with all that. So bring your knees back up to center, nice breath, and then exhale, hips to the right, draw your knees up, and then lower your knees over to the left side now. Good. So take a moment, you're on the left, and you can hang out here in your spinal twist. Arms are out to shoulder height and see if you can really root and ground through your shoulder blades here. This feels so good. Just decide where your knees want to be. And if you want to do some oblique or side sit-ups, this is the time. Bring your hands behind the head gently. We're not bending our neck really at all. We're just looking up at the sky. We inhale from the side body up, exhale down. Don't quite let your head touch the floor. And just think about the fact that we've done 30 days of yoga together. Just absolutely incredible. Remembering some days had practice, some days had just fun, some days we didn't even do any asanas or poses. Couple more breaths. Try not to use your neck. Try not to use just your hands. Last one. Hold up if you want to feel where you're getting that contraction. These are really nice side sit-ups to do for the side body powerhouse. Good, and lower down. Remember always to check in with your own sense of what's good for you any day, any time. Being mindful. Good. Arms reach out to the sides again. Let's charge up through the core. Lift the knees back to center. You can use that left hand. And then we're going to ground through our feet. Bring the hips back to center to the left and then lower your arms to the ground. Let's roll like a ball to sit up. If you don't like this one, roll onto your side, push the ground away with your arms and we'll meet you in Sukhasana, easy seated pose. So bring your knees up if you're going to roll today. Hands can arrive on the knees or back of the thighs. We kick the feet up a little bit on an inhale, roll up to seated. Your spine is nice and rounded, and then you exhale and you roll down. This is a lovely massage on either side of the spine, your erector spinae muscles. Good. Keep your spine really rounded. I'm going to keep my spine like a big letter C for the word Canada, and I'm wishing loving Canadian energy from my heart to yours. And if you haven't seen Mucho Mucho Amor, last one, on the flicks, I'm sending you Mucho Mucho Amor. So come up to a seated position. 
If you've seen Walter Mercado, you know who I'm talking about. What a lovely human. So when you arrive in your seated position, let's just find our breath. I think my special guests are officially out of the shot, but it doesn't matter. Find your nice tall spine, find your inner smile, perhaps you even find your outer smile. So take a moment to find a seated, comfortable position. Bring the sitting bones back and behind you. Think about some of the tools that we've learned in our 30 day series and some of the tools you've learned in life. So sitting with a tall spine, we're gonna do a spinal twist here, the, real, the one that really activates and gets us going. And this is the one where we bring the arms out to the sides, shoulder level. We're gonna bend at the elbows and we're gonna take the thumb and the index finger together, denoting Gyan Mudra or inner wisdom. We turn to the left on the inhale, we turn to the right on the exhale, and we start to speed it up. If it's available, add a vigorous breath. If you don't like going fast, twist to one side, catch your hand on your knee, maybe open that other wing really nice and wide. If you do like going fast, see how that feels. Otherwise, go to the other side and give yourself a slower spinal twist. I love the mantra Sat Nam Sat Nam Sat Nam, which is the Kundalini Yoga mantra for truth is my identity. Sat means truth, Nam means name, Sat Nam. And it just tunes you into your truest, most divine space, most divine self, who you really are. Last 10, start to slow it down. You can say something like, great day. You can say anything you want. You can say nothing. Good, last two, really slow. Come back to center, hold the breath for eight counts. Inhale. Keep your shoulders down. Eyes are rolled inwards and upwards at your third eye center, your Ajna Chakra. Good, now exhale, long, smooth, exhale breath, eight counts. <laughs> Not much left in there. Good, let's float the arms down, let's shake the wrists. Let's bring the hands on the knees, let's alternate shoulder shrugs. Remember that we get a lot of ill effects from text neck, from being on our phones, looking down, so we want to do the opposite. Now pause, do shoulder circles, up, round, and back. After I watch the movie, what the bleep do we know? One more circle, then go the other way. I saw the water particle part with the work of Masur Emoto. And I realized that water takes on the particle shape like a snowflake, depending on what was written on the bottle. Last breath, swim your arms forward, clasp your hands, and stretch the inside of your hands out. Good. And after I saw what the bleep do we know, I wanted to say, I am love. I am love. I wanted to send that intention, bring your arms up if available, or out in front, wherever you can. And I just wanted to say, I am love. My water particles are pure love. Good, come to the right. Excellent, come to the left. And then come back to center. Good, release your arms down. Good, so now we're going to come onto all fours, onto our hands and knees. Um, and I just found that so powerful with the water particles, like come on. They take on the shape of their container, what's written on them. Check out the work of Emoto and the water crystals. Polluted water, by the way, wouldn't take on a crystalline form. Um, so that's very interesting. So you're on all fours. Let's do one ceremonial downward dog, and we're going to curl our toes under here, lift the knees, lift the hips, and bring your head below your heart. Isn't that the most wonderful thing to do? So walk out the dog, you can 
Walk your feet a little forwards, a little back. Pause for a moment, Be really ground through your hands, grip through your fingers, bend your knees, and send your hips just a little tiny bit higher. See if that feels nice. A variation that we haven't tried before is to gently pick up one hand and touch the opposite ankle. If that's the first time you've done that, it's very humbling. <laughs> but see if it's available for you today, and if not, Last breath in dog. Good. <sighs> We're gonna bend the knees. Walk your hands back towards your feet. Yes, walk your hands back. And then we're gonna slowly bring the body up to standing. Excellent. So do you remember what we were doing in our practice with our sun salutations, our moon salutations? Me neither. Um, so yes, moon salutations. Um, we're very familiar with sun salutations, but the moon ones are a little bit more obscure. So finding a space right now where you can just be in your standing posture for a couple more moments, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Take a couple of moments to ponder what would come after I am. Just even to your water particles. Remember you're more than 80% water, so water is probably one of the most healing mechanisms for humans. Bathing, uh, swimming, just even putting your feet in water, Epsom salts, foot bath. Any exposure to water and my intention, my world seed is to make sure that all humans around the planet have access to clean water. That is maybe a dream we'll see in our lifetime, maybe not but at least we can have the intention. One more breath. I am hopeful. I am loving. Whatever. I am joy. And this is a little shout out to all my friends and beautiful people all around the world who are perhaps participating. Australia, Europe, South America, America, Hawaii, <laughs> all over the world. Um, so thank you so much. And of course, Canada, Canada, Canada. Can't say enough good things about my home. So blessed to be born here this lifetime. Thank you. Must have done something right last time. <laughs> All right, one more breath in Tadasana. If you're giggling and thinking about your I am presence, then I'm super, super happy. We're going to do one round of moon salutations. We're going to go through one side, then we'll go through the other side. And then we're pretty much done here. I'm so happy to be able to say that we've reached this pinnacle together. So moon salutations, let me guide you. I'm not sure the breathing will exactly work out with the count, but let's just flow in the best way we know how. Today when I'm filming this, it's a new moon. It's the perfect time to actually film a moon uh, uh, namaskar. So Chandra Namaskar. Let's bring the hands up overhead. Big inhale breath. Tip to the right now. Lateral bend. Big inhale breath up to center. And then exhale, lateral bend to the left. Good. Come back up to center. Open your arms. Step your feet wide and come into five-pointed star. Big inhale breath. Exhale, come into a goddess squat. Inhale, come back up. Warrior two, turn your right toes out. Look out past your right extended arm and bend your right knee. Inhale, exhale to bend the knee. Good. Now peaceful warrior or hero. Inhale forward. Exhale, reach up and back. Good. Nice opening in the side body. Then we come into triangle. Straighten both legs. Keep your breath going. Reach over your right leg. Exhale to float down. Left hand comes up. Good. Then we're going to release that left arm to the floor. Pivot on your back foot so that you come into a nice runner's lunge. Lower that left knee, and we're going to take the right arm up and over to a twist. Good. Exhale, lower down. 
Advance is to do that one more time with your left hand on the outside of the right foot. I'm going to keep my left hand where it is. One more time, big breath. Open the wing on the right, exhale, lower down. Come back to runner's lunge, lower that back foot, and we come into devotion, bringing both arms up and a little back bend here. Good. Next, we come forward, bring both hands forward, come back to runner's lunge, and set up for Ardha Chandrasana, half moon pose. So stand up on that right leg, right hand comes to the floor or on a block, and we open up through the left side. Take your time. Good. Half moon pose. Excellent. Then lower your left hand and leg back down and lean back slightly into a nice forward fold with partially open legs. You can bend your front knee. Good. Now walk your hands to center and we'll come into wide leg forward fold. You can adjust your feet a little bit wider. Head is below the heart. Right hand on the floor now, come up into a twist with the left. Good, lower back down. Then we switch hands, right arm reaches up to the right. Good, and then gently come back down. Head is below the heart for a little quick moment. And then we're gonna roll the body, nice and strong core up to standing. Good. Five-pointed star, goddess pose, big breath, inhale, exhale to come down. Inhale back into star, step your feet together. Big breath, lift the arms up overhead, and then hands together at the heart. Excellent, that was half around of moon salutation. Let's go the other side. Inhale up, lateral bend to the left, squeeze into the stomach, release any worry, come back to the center, squeeze to the right, squeeze into the liver, release anger, replace with enthusiasm and joy, release your arms down, step your feet one leg length apart, come back into star, Big breath, think about your star, your constellation, what you really are. Big breath now, goddess squat, inhale, exhale down. Exhale, come back up, warrior two to the left. Left toes turn out, left arm you look over and then bend that left knee. Inhale, exhale into this beautiful warrior two. Good. Now reach forward with left arm, exhale up and back, and come into peaceful warrior. Maybe you even smile here, good. Come back into straight legs, triangle, trikonasana. Look over to the left like somebody's pulling your left arm. Exhale, lower down. Maybe you look up at top arm. Excellent, all your chakras are firing up here. Bend your right uh, left knee, lower your right hand to the floor, pivot on the back foot, arrive in a nice lunge, and then lower that right knee to the ground. Good, so a twist here, keep your right hand grounded. Exhale, you can open that left wing up and open now. Big breath, and then you release back down. One more breath, if it's there for you today, your hand is on the outside of the leg, that takes a little bit of practice. Good, and then lower back down. Come up, runner's lunge, big heart, big chest here. And then we do devotion, take your arms up, lift your whole upper body, find your core, lead with your heart. And exhale, do just the mini, mini tiny back bend here. Never any strain or pain. Reach forwards, back in your nice runner's lunge. 
Take a breath, and then we're going to plant our left hand, pick up our right leg, and we're going to try our half moon. So left hand is grounded, left foot is grounded, and we start to open up through that right leg. Lift it to where you're comfortable, or it can just stay on the floor. If it's available, you might open up your right arm as well. Good. Plant your hand, your right hand, plant your right foot, and then gently just come into a forward fold with your feet separated. Bend your left knee a little bit if you want to, and then we're going to walk our feet, pardon me, our hands forwards. Step your feet a little bit wider apart. Inhale and exhale to lower. Good. Now we do our twist. Start with the right hand down, twist to the left. Excellent, nice, beautiful spinal twist here. Release that left arm, right arm comes up and over. And then release down. Remember for a split moment, we get our anti-depression pose by leaving our head below the heart in wide leg forward fold. Good, and then we're gonna use our core, push the ground away, use the middle body to come back up to standing. Find your star pose. Big breath here, come into goddess, exhale down. Inhale, come back to star, bring your feet together. Walk, hop, jump, place your feet together arms up overhead, and we finish off with lateral bend to the right, lateral bend to the left, and then come back up to center, and we bring the hands down to the heart. Excellent. How did that feel? Yay. <laughs> I really liked it. So take a moment now just Gather your bits, get your clothing arranged. I want you to bring your feet just a little bit more than hip width apart. <sighs> months and months ago, I sent energy to a neighbor. I asked my yogi friends during a live class to send energy to my friend. He had an operation and he got very ill. And I'm so happy to say I just saw him walk by. <laughs> He's doing great. So guess what? Healing energy, love, and kindness, it works. So bring your hands together. We're going to make energy ball here. What? Bend your knees a little bit. Find your energy ball. Use your imagination if you haven't ever felt it before. Visualize and sense, intend for your energy to be beautiful and healing between your hands. And then wherever feels right, just go ahead and place your hands on your body somewhere. Maybe on your hips, maybe over your chest. Maybe you're having some sort of physical issue with your body and you're like, my heart, the breast tissue, men and women. Don't forget, men have nipples and breasts. <laughs> your knees, your knees. Maybe you have a knee thing coming up. Sending, I'm sending your knees, love. I'm sending your heart, love. Yes, and wherever you are, just be there for one more moment. I'm doing moving the dog for the camera shoot asana. <laughs> one more rep, wherever you are. Your hands, I'm imagining sending Reiki, which is the Japanese word for the transfer of unconditional loving kindness. Rei is the transfer of the universal life energy key, the, the life energy. Good, so wherever you are, we've got this nice thing happening where the dog's paws are touching and there's a rainbow on it to add a little effect. So make your way down to the mat now. We're gonna finish off with cow's face pose in a seated position. So we know cat cow, full cow face is a little bit different. And we might have done it, I think we did it once in our 30 days. So we're going to start with our right leg with the knee facing directly forwards rather than out to the side, okay? Then you take your left leg and bring it up and over. 
and you're going to find a place that feels good. Fire log, that might be something that you want to do with just that opposite leg on top. If it's available, you might slide down and your knees overlap and then your feet come out in front of you. So typically the leg that's on top, the hip comes right off the ground. See if you can wiggle and get yourself into a nice comfortable place. If not, always putting a block or towel or pillow under that left cheek. Good. So we're going to hang out here. If you want to try the arms today, we're just going to do a little variation. We'll do eagle arms. So we've got a cow eagle. Yeah. <laughs> Take your arms to the sides. Bring your right arm in front. Bend at the elbow. Left arm sits on top. And this is a nice variation, just having a V shape for love. The V in love. And then if it's available, you spiral the palms towards each other and maybe we get just an extra little bit of a stretch here. The last variation you might try is just to bring your chest a little bit forwards and remember to smile and breathe and enjoy what you're doing. If you want to do full cow face arms, that's totally cool too. Wherever you are today, I'll just offer you a sweet little variation that's super easy. We're going to do the most difficult thing we've ever done in this 30 day series right now and it's really fun. It's not even difficult. It looks kind of cool. So what we're going to do is take our hands, if you can do this, try it. Take your hands and plant them on the floor in front of your top foot. Don't even think about it. Lift up your bum. Your feet don't really move. They're just going to spiral. You're going to walk yourself all the way around and you're going to sit back down, okay? First time I tried that, didn't work. Second time, didn't work. Third time, it worked. So, wherever you are, if you arrived, awesome. If not, cool. You've got something that you look forward to that you can get yourself from cow's face pose one way, walk yourself over and get yourself to the other way. Left knee is now totally forwards, pointing out in front and you have your right leg up and over. Fire log it would just be to hang out here. If it's available, your knees are crossed. Good. This is our last big pose. <laughs> what? And then we're gonna sit up tall. Think about that hip. If it's really off the ground, you can always slip or slide something underneath there. Breathe and soften your face. And if you'd like to include some arms, you can do the cow's arms or you can do the nice eagle Garuda arms. So left arm in front, bend at the elbow, right hand sits on top. Maybe this is your pose today, maybe you just give yourself a little hug. Think of the V in love or the word evolve or whatever your favorite V word is. What? <laughs> Alright, then you spiral your palms towards each other. They don't have to quite line up, of course, but if it's available, that's another option. And your last variation is maybe just to move forward slightly. Good. Wherever you are, take a moment. Revere the cow, the great goddess. One of the best compliments my very dear friend and I received when we were youngsters was that we had big, beautiful brown cow eyes. What? Bring your arms open now. Release them down. And when I think of the cow, I go back to India in my mind where the cow is so sacred it would not be eaten. The cow representing the goddess. So let's just tune in to how we eat, what we eat, and we ask that peace begins on our plate. Whatever that means for you. Just a little bit more mindfulness, mindfulness because the factory farming isn't good. They're not animals. They don't get to live properly. All right, let's release the legs. I don't want to make you feel bad. I just want you to get cleaner sources of food. <laughs> All right. Maybe grow a few vegetables of your own. Meatless Mondays is an activism point. Good. And then we're going to come back to nice tall spine. I'm happy to say I'm going on my third year of veganism and I try not to be one of those jerks that goes on and on about it. So wherever you are, roll yourself down. I do try to promote at the very least that I feel a lot happier. I feel a lot happier and my bowels feel a lot better. I had to try that diet style so it works for me. I'm not going to say anything else. All I know is substitution. If I want ice cream, I go get vegan ice cream. If I want enchiladas, I'll make it all vegan. 
Just make it with different food. They even use jackfruit to make ribs. Yay! <laughs> All right, I know I'm rambling on, sorry about that, the Babylon about the food. So wherever you have arrived, please come up with your knees and having your whole body be on the ground now. We're gonna slowly finish off this beautiful series together or quickly finish it. No, we won't quickly finish it. I'll slowly finish it. And we're going to just really honor where we're at right now. So see how you feel, take a couple of breaths. And we already started to create the energy ball. The beautiful thing is we can do it anytime, anywhere. So we can rub our hands together, rub the feet together, go up and down, go side to side. When you coordinate the feet, it becomes a little more silly and weird. <laughs> and then circling around but you're waking up your 7,500 nerve endings per foot, your 1,500 nerve endings per hand, circle the other way now, and approximately 200 acupressure points per ear. What? All right, so bring your hands and feet down. And then just above your heart, making your energy ball. So hands just slowly starting to open and close your fingers can be rounded, your hands can be a little bit cupped. And just set an intention in the word Reiki, the transfer of universal life energy, the Japanese form of energy healing. Um, in, when I did my Reiki mastership, it was a reminder that we can use energy and we can only use it in a kind, mindful, loving way. We never practice anything dark or black magic, ever. Um, we only use energy in kind and loving ways. And I want you to think about this energy now between your hands as the most healing, beautiful sphere of energy you could ever offer yourself. Bring it down to your heart. Bring it down to your body, anywhere that is appropriate or really lovely and healing for you today and just sense and feel energy between your hands. You can visualize that you're placing this energy ball somewhere along your body or sometimes what we call the fully realized aura or the eighth chakra is sometimes known as the seven primary glowing chakras in the body all vibrating together in unison. And of course, we went a little further in our series and we activated 12 chakras. So we're going to do just a beautiful visualization now of healing the 12 chakras of the body. So you can do your own little meditation. You can stay in Shavasana for a long time. But Gently, we're going to visualize and imagine the earth star chakra, our connection to this earth. And we're going to thank the earth for inviting us here. We're going to solidify our connection to the earth. Then we're going to float our awareness to the root chakra, the muladhara chakra. And we're gently going to ask and sense that the root chakra be healed at this time, the red, the root. Then we float gently into the belly area and first we access the sacral chakra. So just above the root, connecting into a place in the body that has a beautiful magnetism that's very much to do with creation, very much to do with you being conceived. And in the sacral chakra, women have a womb where they have a space where the womb was. And for men, we, we, <laughs> for men, um, there's a connection without the womb that you're getting energetically fed through magnetism and electricity from the outside. So see for a moment, I know it sounds weird, but see if you can connect with this sacral chakra with the second primary chakra in the body as a place of passion, as a place of creation. For men and women, of course, this place where the reproductive areas all mix up together and we create with intention. 
And that doesn't have to be children. That could be anything. We create our world. We create our love. We create our, our energies. So just think about that passionate little spark for a moment in the sacral chakra. And you can imagine a beautiful fire in the lower three or four chakras of the body where <clears throat> we've got the logs, we've got the wood, we've got the beautiful red and the embers, and then we've got the orange. So let's move up from the red to the orange, and then we'll gently go into the navel chakra. So right underneath your belly button, the energy or the visualization of your beautiful fire, your energy bank account, your powerhouse. This is where we store all this magical energy in the lower body. Then we come up now to the solar plexus, our Manipura, the solar plexus chakra. We visualize a flower of life glowing there, the most beautiful golden color. Then we go into the heart and we feel the bridge that is the bridge between the spiritual and the physical worlds, the heart representing love, compassion, nurturing. Then we float our awareness to the neck and the throat, Vishuddha chakra. We go into a space of receiving knowing our mouth, our words speak what we need and wish for in life. And it's blue, like the never-ending oceans or the never-ending skies. It's limited, limitless. Then we go into third eye. We go into our intuition, our possible Akashic records that we can access. I'm saying possible because we possibly might have accessed that. Our intuition, our awareness, then we go into the crown chakra and we sense and feel this purple energy, this divine energy connecting us to the heavens. Then we go into our causal chakra, the moon chakra above the head, connecting us to our divine feminine wisdom, to the energy of the moon. Then we go into soul star chakra, and for a moment we connect with our own soul, what's also sometimes known as the oversoul, our monad. And then the highest chakra of all, the stellar gateway, think about a star or a constellation, even perhaps your guides who are connected there, Metatron, the seraphim, the angels, the sonics, all the way up to the biggest source of divine energy there is. So wherever you are, gently imagine that your whole body is now glowing like a giant crystal egg, your beautiful crystal light body, your matrix to hold your soul. And the word Metatron simply means beyond the matrix, bringing us the energy of sacred geometry and science and wisdom and math <laughs> and spirituality all in one ball of divinity that is you right now having this experience so take a couple moments now imagine you're going to have the best day ever imagine that as you sleep tonight all your chakras or energy centers will balance out the best energy for you in your life at this time. Take a deep breath. Promise me you're gonna have a herbal tea later today or a big glass of water. Flush your emotional toilet. Flush your mental toilet. Flush your spiritual toilet. Flush it all and just let the elixir come back. So wherever you are, let's just gently wiggle our fingers and toes. We're going to roll onto our side and we're going to keep that nice divine feeling within. Come up to a seated position. If you're more comfortable, just stay in Shavasana. And when you arrive, we're going to come back to our three wishes, our intention. So let's Float the hands to the heart. Think about yourself and imagine one of your wishes has already come true. 
And then if you have energy and love extra, a little, little extra in the sack today, then sending love and healing to someone else or some group of beings. Could be any energy in this planet to help heal any discord to do with children, to do with anything that is not of a unconditionally loving consciousness. Send your loving healing to that now. See it as already healed. And then one last wish, one last wish for our earth. Perhaps you bathe the earth in the unity consciousness grid or perhaps the earth gets into your heart, or perhaps you expand so big that your garden and your flower and your gem are so big that you hold the vision of this beautiful earth within the gem in your flower that has grown from your muddy waters. And take a deep breath. If you need one, ask for a miracle today. Ask for a sign. I'm giving you one right now. You did it. And I'm so proud of you. I'm really, really just so happy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahalo, aloha nui. All of my favorite words mixed into one expression that I can tell you how divine you are. So let's bring the hands to the third eye and we finish with my favorite prayer, we dedicate the merits, of our, the merits of our practice to all sentient beings. May all beings be relieved of their suffering and may we dwell together with great fruitfulness and harmony. The light in me greatly honors and sees the light in you. Namaste. Thank you everybody. Words can't describe what I'm feeling right now, but I'm very grateful. And I'll try to just say with all of my heart, thank you for being part of this. And wherever you are in your journey, may you continue to plant world seeds of love and kindness for yourself and this earth for the rest of your soul's lives. Lives. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Puppy Puppy Fan says, thank you for watching me grow up a little bit. I'm a baby, but I'm getting to be a teenager now, and I'm so happy. Puka Dog, she's over there. She's waiting at a door that's closed. But you know what? We know how to open the doors. So thank you, everybody. What, a, what an honor. I really appreciate you letting me be your guide. Yay. And now answer that question. What are you? I am.